In this video, we're going to see how to implement deep linking in Android. Deep linking is where you have something like a URL on a browser, or rather a hyperlink. And when the, the user clicks on that hyperlink, it opens not only your app, but a specific activity within your app. So, why? Because we want to open a specific activity. Maybe we have some kind of promotion, and we want first-time users to see a specific screen that returning users don't see. Another really good reason to, re, uh, reason to use deep linking is sometimes you have to punt out to a web view in the middle of an application. So if there's a form to complete or something with a lot of data or something that's just web optim or mobile optimized uh, from the web, sometimes we'll need to punt out to this uh, web view, have the user complete an action, and then come back. What we can do here is when the user's finished with this action, we can have the user click on a deep link and the deep link returns us back to our application. So two really good uses. So one thing that we can think about here is a bit of an analogy. We know that we can implement something like the camera or also the image gallery by using a few specific keywords. First of all, we need an action constant. And in this case, for the image gallery, we're using action pick. Now we can further narrow down what kind of uh, activity we invoke by using something called data and type. So in this case, we're calling from our application to another application by using this thing called application action constant data and type. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our application to go the other way. And that is, we're going to set up our application to be called from the outside. It can be called from another application on our device, or it can be called by one of these smart links. So what we're going to need is Android Manifest, which is where we have all of our activities described. Then we need to set up an intent filter on the action that we want to invoke when the user clicks this deep link. We have to use action Android name equals view, and I've, I've shortened that a little bit, so I'll show the full thing when I jump into the example in just a moment. That just says that this is something that is reachable from Google search. Now we'll say, let me jump down to category. We'll say category browsable, which means that this intent or this activity can be open from the web. And category default means that this activity can respond to implicit intents. Remember the difference between an implicit intent and an explicit intent. With an implicit intent, we just say what we want to do, but not how to do it. With an explicit intent, we say specifically which class we want to invoke. Now, action, uh, action Android name equals view or action constant, any kind of intent filter is going to need that. Anything called from the outside world will likely need this category equals default. But what makes the deep link interesting is the data element. Because in the data element, we, we kind of say, here's the URL that we want to open this activity. So uh, we'll take a look right now at the, at the um, Android emulator. And I want to show you what happens kind of in the before view. So just one moment, we'll open kind of a uh, I'll tell you what, well, I'll just type in, I've made, we also need a web page that has the link. And so I've made a page, whoops, looks like it's evading me here. Here we go. Okay. I've made a page. I just put it up on plainplaces.com so I could access it over a browser. You could do a very similar thing uh, by just putting a link on GitHub if you wanted. That would work a very similar way. So I made plainplaces.com slash deeplink.shtml. And you see, if I click on this right now, it just says not found because I haven't set up my deep link. So let's go ahead and set up that deep link. First of all, I go into my application and I look for the file called Android Manifest and it pops up pretty quickly. And I have a couple of different activities here. I have the GPS plan activity, which by default is the first screen that we see. But for a deep link, I wanted to actually go somewhere else. I wanted to go to a different, um, a, a different activity. So uh, we'll just, pop up here, we'll go to our color capture activity. We'll just tidy it up a little bit, put that activity on a new line. Now what we'll do is we'll say intent filter, and then we'll say Android colon label, give it something unique, and then we'll say equals, uh, let's say deep link, that's probably not a really good name, but, and also we should externalize that to strings XML, but nonetheless, it'll get us up and running. Now, we know that an intent filter is going to need an action constant, so we say action, Android colon name. Now, if we were calling from one of our apps to another app, we could make this name whatever we want. But in our case, we want to make it android.intent.action 
dot view, and you see it does a little uh, autocomplete helper here. So uh, that's a thing that says it can be found by Google search. And we, uh, we can either make that self-terminating or do like so. Okay, uh, next we're going to say category and Android name. And remember this one, we have our default and we also have one called browsable. So let's go uh, here, we can get browsable just like so. Terminate that tag and then category. So browsable means it's accessible by the web, Android name. Uh, now this one, we need to say android.intent.category.default, which means it can be invoked by an implicit intent. Now comes the important part. Uh, the last thing that we need to do is we need to specify this data. And if you think about uh, the image gallery, we know that the action is action pick, which means we want to open something. And the data is what tell us the use, tells us the URL and also the uh, file type that we want to open. So it's a way of taking an action constant and qualifying it even more, saying, okay, I want to be accessible from the web, but only if the link that the user clicks is this link. And so we have to separate this into a few parts. First, let's say Android scheme, and this one is required, and we'll say equals HTTP. So HTTP or HTTPS, a few more we need to go here. Android colon host, and this one I'm going to say equals uh, www.plantplaces.com, okay? And then we'll say Android, colon path prefix. And for this one, I'll simply say something like uh, color capture. And now what it's going to do is it's essentially going to put all of this, oh, let me terminate the tag as well. Uh, so there we go. What it's going to do is it's essentially going to uh, look at everything that we have here. So HTTP www.plantplaces.com slash color capture. Let's make that color capture.shtml to kind of give us a nice landing page. And if a user clicks on this in the browser, it's going to open our app. So I'll deploy our app and we'll take a look. Now I loaded the app on my phone. I did close it though, and I've gone back to our deep link page that we saw earlier. Remember before I clicked on this and it went to basically a 404, it said content not found. And you'll notice I'm in a web browser. This is just a little web browser tester, but it worked the same if I were in Chrome or something else like that. Now, when I click on deep link, watch what happens. It gives us an option here and it says open with deep link. That's actually our app and our, uh, our app icon here. Uh, so I'll say just once. And what you'll see in just a moment is sure enough, it pops us up to our color capture activity page. So this web link not only opened up our application, but opened it to a specific activity. So I hope this video has been helpful. Look forward to seeing you in the next. Thank you.